Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gaming Droid and welcome to Astroflux. This is a free-to-play top-down space shooter. Um, it's got a very um, arcadey feel. What I'll do, uh, the music's a little bit limited. It's got a really nice music setup. It's got a really nice music setup. It's got really nice music, but it's a little bit loud. So for now, I'll just pop it off. It is a multiplayer game. So you access onto a server and you're all playing the server together. There are daily missions and um, group missions that you can complete. As you level up, you uh, improve an awful lot of different things. As you can see, you have kind of drift. So I'm not touching anything at the moment on the controls and I'm still floating. So there's a certain degree of drift. There is a little bit of dampening, but there's also an active dampening. So in this game, there is no reverse. To reverse, you simply go forwards in the direction you want to go and then turn around. What reverse does is reverse acts as your active motion dampening. So if you can see, I'm moving towards this and I stop. But if I don't use the reverse key, I just float away and I continue floating for quite some time. Um, all in all, as far as kind of like a, a free to play space game goes, you've got multiple different weapons. Um, you can buy. Uh, different weapon slots. You can upgrade your ship to have weapon slots using steel, which is the, the in-game stuff you collect. Uh, you gather artifacts, you can gather crew members, you can visit planets, you can do different quests. There are timed quests, which are usually give you about um, 40, 30 to 40 minutes to complete the quest, and it's usually uh, kill X, find X, do X, collect X amount of scrap, etc. Um, and those are just your kind of like fly around missions. Um, and as well as the fly around missions, there are the story missions and then there are the daily missions. So in the missions tab you have your time missions, which is seek and destroy. Destroy 20 of these vessels. We have our daily missions, which are destroy 40 Hyperion, upgrade 1 tech, take down a fierce Tfat. Uh, Tfat's a kind of boss that spawns periodically. And then the story missions. At the moment my story mission is to uh, level up and uh, sort of progress in my power so that I can continue to do things. This is a planet. Uh, you can deploy teams onto uh, different bits of the planet and then after a certain amount of time you can come back and collect your crew members. You can also train your crew members and level up your crew members. Each crew member has their own statistics. Survival, diplomacy and combat. Survival for survival challenges, diplomacy for diplomacy challenges, combat for combat challenges. And then they have special skills. So she, her special skill is cold, um, which means she has a high resistance to cold which means that in cold environments and on cold planets she's going to be more successful. Later on she can gain different resistances, um, requires cold speciality skill, requires heat, requires diplomacy. So you can see that she specialises in diplomacy. Uh, you can gather crew members as you go. I can leave them there doing that. And there's a shield popped up around this planet and periodically this happens is the aliens spawn in a station, wrap a shield around a planet and I can no longer land there. To land there I have to take out the shield generator. And if I take out the shield generator I can land on the planet. It's a nice simple little fly around. It's kind of like um, Asteroids Plus, maybe Galaxa if you guys remember Galaxa, uh, things like that. And so there's a daily mission complete. You collect scrap and there are little stations dotted around where you can go and research upgrades to your weapons, repair weapons, deal additional damage, uh, upgrade your ship, repair your ship, convert scrap you've collected into steel, all sorts of different things you can do at different stations, purchase weaponry and things. Um, and as you kill ships you can also pick up um, an assortment of uh, artifacts and the artifacts you can pop onto your ship and they give you a bonus towards um, what you're doing. There's a lot, a lot of kind of interesting detail. The the skid mechanic, the skid space flight mechanic, is quite kind of like motion based and quite interesting. Even to the point where the planets rotate and the little station orbits. There's a lot of nice like fine detail going on. So we ex succeeded in our exploration of that uh, part of this planet. So we take our successfulness. We take our success. She gained four skill points and I can pop those skill points into survival and diplomacy and he got injured and he's going to remain injured but he gains six skill points so he's going to grab a few points of survival he's going to grab some kinetic weapon skill and we salvaged 400 steel no artifacts no hydrogen crystals no plasma no iridium 
Now, this is a free-to-play game, so there is a monetization model, and that monetization model is Flux. Flux can be used to upgrade things instead of steel. Flux can be used to purchase things. Flux can be used to buy yourself additional crew members. There's a lot of things you can do with Flux. And there's also chests you can buy. Uh, you get chests daily as well. So I got one free reset, and one free reset allows me to um, basically kind of re redo something that I've failed miserably at. This is a scrap station. I convert the scrap that I've gotten into steel, and then I can take off. And I've also completed a mission. So that's given me some experience and some steel. I can complete this, which gives me some experience and some steel, and five troons. Um, evil Stalkers, so this is a higher level mission. Uh, this will give me one flux, which is one of the paid for cash. So you get daily rewards as you can expect. Um, you get cash, uh, flux cash as you go. So there's, it's, it's a quite kind of gentle model. It's not ridiculously expensive. Um, you don't have to spend money as long as you enjoy the little fly around mechanics. It isn't a very deep game as far as the fight mechanics go. There's a couple of things you can do later on in the game, like you, know, you can boost shields and you can boost weapon damage and there's a few active skills you can get. You can change weapons to suit the kind of opponent you're fighting and, and things. But in reality, it's, it's quite a shallow game as far as the actual mechanics of the combat go. There's a few sort of interlocking systems like the crew systems and the planet landing systems and things like that. Um, so it's it's not ridiculously deep as far as things go, but it's also a fun little free-to-play game. If you like things like Asteroids, Galaxa, um, you like the little top-down space shooters, especially the ones with the skate physics, um, the skating flight physics, then this isn't a bad thing to go for. And it can get a little bit repetitive in the base, um, kind of like just grinding to level up. But most free-to-play games have a little bit of grind. Periodically, there will be uh, special enemies that spawn. Tifat, uh, which is a giant's flying saucer that shoots lightning and is exceedingly difficult to kill on your own. Um, but e the server you're on announces when it spawns and you'll often get four or five people all converging on it. So down here on my map, you can see I've got a skull spawned in the bottom right, or bottom left, down in the centre. And I'm actually going to head down there and I'm going to see this is probably going to be a Tifat and uh, we're going to see if we can't take it out. These are the very, this is the starting area and these are the very first sort of enemies you face and I've upgraded my weapon a couple of times and have a couple of artifacts that make my weapon more powerful. So you can see that I'm just kind of slicing through. Down here we have different bonuses and we have our shield and our health and our power-ups. Down here we've got our cargo bay, our alien encounters, our ship, our artifacts and our solar system map. So you can see that there's, there's quite a bit going on. I'll open the solar system map in a moment and uh, so this is the TFAT, so it seems quite benign and peaceful. I mean, it's got 20,000 hit points, so it's going to be hard to kill. But the issue is that when I get too close, it starts doing that. And it's wiped out my shield in one go. The trick is to kind of... Well, I was about to say the trick is to kind of try and keep your distance, but when there's only one of you and it's focusing on the one of you, you kind of get burnt down quite quickly. I didn't lose any experience. Later on, um, you lose experience. Um, I've got I've currently got a, an XP protection in place, so I'd lose less experience when I die, and I lost so little experience then that it zeroed it out for me. I did lose all my scrap though, all the scrap from my cargo bay. Luckily, I just converted most of it into steel, so I'd only picked up a few pieces since then. You can upgrade your weapons. You can upgrade different areas of your ship using steel and, and experience. So it's a, it's a fun little top-down um, skate shooter. There's not much more to say than that. I mean, once you get deep into the sort of the upper areas of the game, it's going to be a lot more complicated. There's going to be more interactive systems going on. But when you start, you can expect quite a long period of time, unless you're willing to spend the cash, because free-to-play games, at least decent free-to-play games, are cash in exchange for time. So if you've got a good job, but not a lot of time to play, and you want to do the higher level things in free-to-plays, then the kind of exchange cash in exchange for what a lot of people would do over time is fine as long as it then kind of groups you with the people who are at that sort of experience level or that sort of power level for pvp there is an element of pvp in this um, but you actually have to opt into it and you actually have to go to little pvp server arenas um, 
I'm not a PvP fan, especially not in skate physics games, because I find the mechanics frustrating. Um, even if you have got a inertial dampening system with the reverse key. So the solar system map. So the solar system map, the solar system shows that there's this is the bit area. If you actually go flying off into the distance, there are others, and there's a warp gate that takes you to another part of the solar system, so you can actually travel rapidly between different sections in the solar system. Um, down here, this area is the starting area. It's got uh, Erath and it's got the AF centers. Then up here, you've got the elite zone, which is the, the zone that's more suited to high level players. And then through the warp gate, you've got even higher level zones as well. So we're just flying across space to get to the elite zone and to the upgrade zone, to the upgrade center. So I'm going to pop into the upgrade center, see if I've got enough steel. I've got 2000 steel, I might be able to upgrade something. I've also managed to gather 33 flux uh, in a couple of hours without um, actually sort of paying for anything or... Oh right, so I'm in the middle of the elite zone. So I've actually been given a quest to kill these things. And as you can see, like it's not impossible. I've picked up a little bit of hydrogen there. So again, hydrogen I can turn use the hydrogen to um, convert into uh, proper hydrogen crystals. The hydrogen spill I can use to convert into hydrogen crystals. And there's an artifact. I grabbed an artifact there. And that's my level up. And my level up boosts my ship. There's a couple of ships to choose from at the beginning. I grabbed an engine part. Um, there's a couple of ships to choose from at the beginning. I chose the one that's got high shields because shields regenerate better than hull does. Um, it's got sort of medium to low speed and damage, but it's got very high shields. So as you can see, the upgrade shack, you can upgrade your health and armor, shields, acceleration and speed, power regeneration, and you can upgrade your individual weapons. You need to spend um, points to upgrade your... Uh, you need to spend um, experience to upgrade your sort of maximum upgrade point. So let's grab a few... Oh, that costs flux. I want to buy it for steel. So you can see you can buy them for flux or steel. Um, I've just spent all of my steel on upgrading that. And I can increase my weapons... Um, why is that? I think it's um, a level 1 weapon. Uh, I have upgraded it to a level 3. Not sure about that one. But as you can see, you gain artifacts. So this one's a projectile accelerator that increases kinetic weapon damage. This one is a 9.7 energy resistance. I've currently got energy damage up and I've got um, shielding up as well. And what you can do is uh, this one's being used at the moment, this one isn't. And I can actually upgrade using one of my crew members, I can upgrade over five minutes uh, one of my things. So now I've got a shield boost um, which I've purchased from the upgrade shop. So using Q I can harden my shields, protect you from all damage over two seconds. So I now have basically a two second invulnerability if I've got um, serious damage coming in. So I want to pull back, turn around and harden my shields and see if I can't sort of take out one of these things. Because I've got a quest to take out a couple of these, and hopefully I should be able to do that without too much risk. Even though this is the Elite Zone, I'm a high enough level now that um, I can burn through a lot of things in the Elite Zone. Especially thanks to the upgraded weaponry and the uh, upgraded um, shields and, and um, hull points and things that I've been doing recently. My shields are quite low, so I might want to pull away, harden my shields off. See, that reduced the damage I took to one point there. Um, it is not counting these. So apparently um, those aren't counting towards that. Not sure why they look the same. They must be asking me to kill them in a different sector of space. Now I'm level 6, I can actually go down to the warp point. Um, because that is my next generic quest, I think. Oop, that's players online. Collect the reward for going to level 6. So 
So we've got slavers incoming. Reach level 9. I think I can access the warp point at level 6. So where's the warp point? The warp point is down here. You can fly with the map open. So it lets you track where you're going. Tfat's down there. Um, I could go and kill Tfat. Uh, it seems like Kai Wen's having a fight with Tfat at the moment. So you see, there's a nice little kind of gentle exploration element. There's a little bit of combat exploration element. It's quite fun. I'll see if I can access the warp point, and then if I can't, I'll call that the video. Uh, this is Astroflux, um, and it is a free-to-play game. So if you would enjoy this sort of game, give it a look. Let's have a look. Can we jump through the warp point? Yes, we can. Let's go 150 steel to visit Capello. Ah, and you see here, I can choose to warp to a normal one or to a PvP one. I'm going to warp to a normal one rather than a PvP one. It does slightly split the um, player base. Enemies drop 25% more junk on PvP servers. Thank you for that. And as you can see, we have a whole new area to explore, new planets, new factories, and new opponents. Although these are similar looking opponents to the ones I had before. A little bit tougher. Takes a little bit longer to pop them. And that's the game. It's, it's a fly around, shoot things, complete quests, land on planets, complete little um, timed missions, upgrade your ship, and just have a little bit of fun. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you again next time.